All right, so today we're gonna to be replacing the heat exchanger for the E550. Um, I'm assuming that um, but this particular model is gonna be the C207, uh, which includes the coupe and most likely the convertible. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and I believe the W212 is gonna have a very similar setup. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through some of the steps to replace a heat exchanger. Um, and you're gonna kind of learn with me as I'm doing this. Um, as you guys can see, um, I am an automotive teacher at a school in Texas, so I do have a lot of things available to me at my disposal. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the things that it's gonna take to remove this heat exchanger um, as easy and as descriptive as possible. Here's my parts list that I got for the actual split cooling in conjunction with the heat exchanger. I wanted to do everything at the same time. Um, I purchased this off of buymercedespartsnow.com, I believe. Um, and as you can see, it's the, all the components that it's necessary uh, to do the actual heat exchanger. Uh, my total was uh, 192 um, and the actual shipping was $18 and I had a small discount that I found online. So coming out to 209, so it's gonna be a little bit cheaper to go this route. I do know that there's some other companies that sell the whole kit together, but I just wanted to uh, uh, be as budget friendly as possible. Um, so this is where you guys can see here, here are the components that are gonna be doing for the actual heat exchanger. Um, the heat exchanger itself, um, another uh, budget-friendly heat exchanger. Um, I did pressure test this, it did pretty well. The welds are really great. Um, I believe I got this heat exchanger for 198 shipped to my house. Um, there's nothing that I can see out of the norm. Um, I don't wanna discredit any other company that makes heat exchangers, but I do wanna do some testing on this in comparison to uh, my stock heat exchanger. Um, and here are the actual slick cooling mods. So you're gonna have your reservoir, um, you are going to need some bolts for this and I'm going to put it in the description or I might put it in the video itself of the bolts that you need to uh, actually make this work. Um, and here are the components. You're going to have this small little hose right here that you're going to need, uh, this particular pipe, um, and a couple other hoses. Uh, you're going to need four feet of half inch hose and you're also going to need four feet of uh, five eighths hose, which is going to be the thicker one here. Um, you're also going to need bar fittings. You can use the plastic ones, but I wanted to go with the aluminum bar fittings uh, just because uh, I got these for about five bucks a piece, so it wasn't a huge deal for me. Uh, but this particular bar is going to be um, three fourths to five eighths bar, and then this particular bar is going to be five eighths to uh, half inch. In conjunction with doing this process, uh, we will be using uh, this particular formula of um, coolant. Uh, for both systems, uh, we are going to have to drain the radiator during this process. Uh, so we're going to fill this up. This is going to be equivalent to OEM. Uh, many people are very sticklers when it comes to running Mer Mercedes specific fluid. Um, this is going to be what I would recommend using if you can't uh, run into a dealership locally to get the actual OEM stuff. But it is made for, you know, Audi, Mercedes, Volkswagen and Porsche. Uh, and it's going to be 50-50 diluted already. Now for the actual radiator system, I'm going to be running normal 50-50 in the engine, and I'm going to be running a 70-30 mix, which is going to be 70% water, 30% coolant, uh, just to make sure that I get the most out of my heat exchanger and split cooling setup, but also to make sure that in Texas, even though we don't get winters, if it does go low, below freezing, I don't want anything negative to happen to my cooling system, or whether that might be you know freezing up in the lines and causing some damage down the line. Part of the process for removing the actual upper shroud is very simple. Uh, there's gonna be a tab here. All you have to do is spin the tab. When you spin the tab, it's gonna allow you to actually lift the shroud up. As you do that, you're gonna actually push the shroud toward the vehicle and then pull the shroud out. Uh, you will have this um, line that I'm assuming controls uh, the opening motion of the actual hood, um, but that's just gonna clip onto this little piece right there. You just gotta remove it on by hand. Some that might be asking questions, you could also see my budget mod. Uh, I don't have the spacers yet. Uh, There's something that I didn't have the correct size. Um, but all I did is went to a hardware store, uh, 3D printed a brake press on my on my actual vise, and I bent the metal you know, to the correct size, and that cost me about $16. So if those people are interested in actually doing like a riser, um, it only cost me about $16 and about, I don't know, maybe about two hours of my time. To assist you to remove the lower shroud, uh, I'm going to be using this impact with a 8mm socket on it, and that's going to probably be the easiest way to get everything off. So what you're going to do next is actually going to remove your actual wheel on the driver's side. 
As I said before, I don't know if the W212 is on the passenger side where the exchanger is, but I do know that for this particular vehicle on my coupe, uh, it is on the driver's side, and that's where you can see the actual heat exchanger vent. Um, you're gonna actually remove a couple of bolts. So there's gonna be one there, one up there, one there uh, behind the brake line. They're gonna be 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, they're actually, actually what they look like right there. They're gonna be actually made of plastic. And then to actually remove this completely, you need to remove these little tabs there, um, there, and keep on looking around to see where you have them. Now, these are a little bit tricky and I'll show you why. Right. These particular tabs, um, they're just made of plastic. Um, and as you can see, they're kind of hard to remove because you don't want to break them. So all they do is they have veins that they stab in um, and you can actually uh, push that in to force the veins to come out. In order to remove them, what I actually use is you can actually probably use a plastic tool to pull them off. But you can actually use a screwdriver just to get them out. And then the rest of the way, you can actually use uh, some pliers uh, gently uh, just to kind of pull them out. So now I have the liner removed and now the exchanger is actually easy to work with. Um, I actually have to remove that bolt also because it's actually pinching it up top. Um, it was actually getting grabbed by one of these somewhere up there. You have to, it's just easier to remove it. Some people can work around it, but in my opinion, it's just easier to remove it. Uh, so that is removed. Uh, I believe there was four tabs in total. And then these particular uh, 10 millimeters, and that'll allow you to get to the, actually, uh, to the actual heat exchanger shroud and the heat exchanger itself. So I've been looking around and I've been kind of referring to a um, DIY on the actual MB world. And part of the DIY says that you have to remove the radiator um, as I'm looking, I'm not sure if I necessarily have to. So what I'm going to do is actually try to bleed or move the coolant from the actual lower hose of the exchanger itself. Um, now, in order to do that, there is just a clip. You can use a flathead screwdriver to pop the clip off and then pull back and I should remove the hose. Uh, another thing that I want to let you know is that make sure that when you guys are doing this, that the car is cooled down or at least you know warm to the touch not you know it doesn't have to be extremely cold uh, i don't want you guys to necessarily uh, you know burn yourself obviously when you guys are doing this job and as you can see as i remove the actual lower hose um, it is starting to uh, bleed the system out or at least from the actual exchanger itself okay. so i was already working on getting this one out um oh, it's already jumping all over it okay so as you can see, that's the heat exchanger and it's not capped off, so it's just kind of <laughs> leaking out from the bottom hose. Uh, one of the issues that I ran into was somewhere up here, you're gonna find that there is a T-bracket that goes right over there somewhere. Uh, what it does is kind of holds the uh, liner down and a couple of different components. You actually have to remove this bracket in order to actually get the whole shroud out. Because the shroud, the way it works, is it actually uh, grabs air from the front part of the bumper. But when this shroud is actually up, it is actually blocking uh, the shroud from actually coming out. When you remove this T-bracket with these two 10 millimeter bolts that are holding it together, uh, you're going to notice that the shroud is going to come out easier. You're going to pull back and then you're going to twist to the left and then pull down. And that's when you'll be able to get that out. All right, so I did remove the shroud. Um, I didn't have it on video, but I will say it was not fun to remove. It actually splits in two pieces. Um, it's kind of hard to see like this, but it was kind of put together. You got to kind of pry it apart. I did break some small clips on it, but it's something that's not going to be able to be put back together. Um, as you can see, here's a comparison between the uh, factory exchanger versus the aftermarket one I purchased. Um, it is bigger. Uh, I can't tell you that bigger is going to perform better. Um, but it definitely looks a lot better than the factory exchanger. Um, also, um, for those that don't replace it, but um, you want to make sure these are clean. Uh, what I did notice is there was a lot of like old grass and bugs and junk that was trapped uh, in the corner of this actual deal. Um, and it could inhibit kind of the performance of your stock exchanger. Um, so just keep in mind that, but it does look almost double the size. Yeah, about double the size in, in thickness. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more cores in this one, um, but it is uh, it should be a pretty pretty big upgrade, hopefully. 
Okay, so part of this install, and it could be just with this aftermarket radiator that I have because of its pure size. Obviously, it's not gonna fit in the same size uh, unit itself. So what I actually have to do with this unit is cut the back portion. Now the back portion has a shroud that meets up to the inner fender. I'm not as worried about that. My, my worry would be this particular part of the shroud. Um, putting and pulling the air into the unit itself uh, the rear doesn't bother me as much so I actually have to remove that portion of the shroud and forgive my cutting it wasn't the I didn't have the best tool to cut this um, in order to get here when you put it back together it's gonna be a little bit tighter but you want to make sure that those tabs uh, are based uh, protruding because this actually is what holds uh, the radiator in place so I can actually grab the radiator the whole unit and it will not come out that's what's going to hold it in place and obviously these tabs are what puts everything back to in order okay so during the process of you actually removing the fan shroud uh, there's going to be two bolts uh, that's going to hold the hard line that actually goes to your lines that actually go to the intercooler you're going to have to remove one there and you're going to have to remove one right there before you can actually pull the whole radiator shroud to access the next part of the install so now that you remove the bottom two bolts, uh, there are going to be two clips. There's going to be a clip that's on the shroud that's like a pinch clip. Uh, and there's going to be one on the opposite side. What you're going to have to do is fold this clip back with your fingers gently and then also apply pressure upward. That way the whole um, radiator will come out. Um, and then you'll have to remove this harness, uh, unclip it so that way it's not attached to the radiator anymore. You'll also want to remove this clip. You don't have to completely remove it, but that's just how I got it out. To remove this upper radiator hose that should have already been bled out um, in order to get the rest of the fan out of its uh, location. Now that you've removed the radiator and it's extremely difficult to remove, um, you're going to want to go ahead, I'm sorry, the fan shroud. You're going to want to go ahead and take these clips out. So it's three of them. I use a pick to pick them off. And then you're going to want to disconnect it from the actual shroud itself. Okay, so this is the angle from the bottom of the car and this is going to look confusing to most of you guys but i promise i'll try to walk you through it so if you look at the hose right there that is going to read the upper radiator hose below the upper radiator hose you're going to have this hose right there that is actually what supplies coolant to the actual uh system uh before it's the split cooling mod so the hose that's supplied to you uh, will go into that orifice and then straight to the reservoir bypassing the original cooling system. You will then have to make an incision here or a cut and then actually put the barb fitting uh, that I'll show you guys here in a second. That hose will then go into the pump. This is going to be the new hose that goes to the reservoir and then this is the hose that I cut that was teed into the radiator to the reservoir and then the cut. You could probably do a better cut than that but probably about you know two inches below the curb that way it's a straight cut all right so now that we have the 5 8 hose that actually connects to the bottom of the feed and it's kind of hard to see um, so it went from 3 fourths to 5 eighths you're going to go ahead and hold on to the hose for the time being and now you're going to install the new piece this piece is going to go where the t was uh, underneath the radiator hose which is going to be that component right there and then from there, this will go to the overflow tank. Okay, so now we're going to install the actual reservoir. Now, in order to actually do this, you're gonna notice that there are gonna be mounting points, um, but you're gonna have to remove the bolts that hold this, uh, I believe this is like a boost, uh, boost solenoid or something of that nature, that actually hold to the bracket. And you're gonna have to remove, uh, should be one, two, three bolts. Uh, that hold the bracket to the actual intake manifold. After you do so, you're gonna have to actually find bolts that are going to replace it because obviously the arms are thicker on the actual reservoir itself. So what you're gonna to wanna to use to secure this reservoir actually down is actually gonna be a quarter inch uh, coarse thread um, bolt you can get at your hardware store. Um, this one's gonna be approximately about 20 millimeters in length. Um, this one's zinc coated. I have a whole bunch of these at the school that I use. Uh, and then also like a flat washer also. Before you install the reservoir, one of the hoses on the kit that's gonna look like this is actually going to be taking the place of the actual intercooler portion that actually feeds it to the uh, air water intercooler. And you're gonna see that. You're gonna unclamp that, unclamp that hose down there. Um, and it's gonna be actually attached to this plastic portion up here. 
and you're gonna loop that. And this loop is pretty much gonna go into the reservoir and go right into the actual uh, uh, intercooler portion itself. All right, so during this process, now that we've got everything together, um, you're gonna wanna start bleeding the system. Uh, this is gonna be for your engine coolant. And obviously that reservoir now is gonna be for your uh, exchanger setup. Um, I didn't go over the final step uh, before I put everything together. But once you put the actual metal hard line into the reservoir, you're gonna to wanna to actually take the hose you worked with at the beginning, which is the half inch, and the five eighths and actually connect them together. So pretty much what's occurring is from the reservoir, you're gonna have the return metal hose that's gonna be, the actual size is gonna be actually a half inch. It's gonna go into your five eighths, and your five eighths is gonna go into your, your pump. From your pump, it's gonna to go to your exchanger, and for your exchanger, it's going to go uh, for your intercooler, and then for your intercooler, it's going to go up. So it's going to just make a complete circuit, um, and that's really going to be it. Uh, so what I'm doing now is letting the car heat up uh, to its correct temperature, and when this thing actually hits uh, 100 degrees, uh, I'll start adding more fluid. You know, after you've let the car burp itself, uh, one thing you do want to make sure is that your coolant level is actually right below the black portion right there um, that's going to be the correct height of coolant when the car is cold uh, that you'll need in the expansion tank itself for watching the video uh, one thing that i wanted to convey was that this job is not a job that i would recommend for the average uh, consumer somebody who does light modifications uh, it was pretty uh, invasive even for somebody like me who's been working on cars for a long time. I mean, so my background, I've done Hellcats and Lamborghinis and things like that. And that's why I teach what I teach now. Um, it was a pain in the butt. Uh, so if you are planning to do this mod, I do recommend maybe taking it somewhere to get done. Uh, just to save you a lot of headache and a lot of time. Um, another thing I also recommend is uh, utilizing some of the newer components or better components. I do know that there's a heat exchanger AMS makes. Uh, there's a heat exchanger that Private Label makes. And those components might be better than what I had purchased. The only reason why I did purchase what I purchased was because I was, um, as I said, I'm more on a budget-friendly setup. Um, altogether, I would say I spent less than, uh, less than about $500 uh, with the split cooling and the heat exchanger. Uh, so if that's something that you're okay with and you're okay with the headache, then you can go that direction. But if you are more of a plug-and-play type of consumer, I recommend going with the product that has already been tried and true. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I'm by no means uh, a YouTuber or somebody who does this on a regular basis, uh, basis. So please be patient with me and I will try to ask, uh, answer any questions that you might have. Uh, thank you very much.